my name is Garth Sundem, and I'm doing this as a sample for the TV show Brain Trust. But if you've stumbled onto this today, welcome. What I'm going to look at today is poker and bluffing. Now, I'm sure that there are many ways to figure out if someone is bluffing in poker by using electrodes, skin conductivity, etc. But that doesn't do you much good when you're sitting at the friendly game down the street. What I'm going to do is offer an equation for when you should bluff in poker. Uh, working from the assumption that there are situations in poker that lend themselves to bluffing and that you can define those situations using math. So let's take a look at the equation. First of all, you've got to look at the skill level of your opponents. We'll represent that with O. You can't bluff bad opponents because they'll call you every time. This is really important. Let's cube it. It's especially important for this term to exceed 4 on a scale of 1 to 10. Your opponents have got to be better than a round of four for you to really even think about bluffing them. Um, next, how conservative are the players still at the table? Conservative, decently important, we'll put a two up there. Next, let's take a look at your table image. If you're seen as a loose cannon, someone who bluffs all the time, you're going to get called. If you're seen as a fairly conservative player yourself, then bluffing's a good idea. Your table image. Next, let's take a look at the flop. Uh, you know, again, this is a fairly specific situation in poker. This is uh, Texas no limit after the flop, trying to decide if you should bluff. The flop you want is something with either total junk on the board or two total junk and one high card that you can claim at least to be holding as your own. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how good is the flop? Turns out we needed a constant up there. and um, other factors that we need to look at in this should you bluff poker equation are the number of people playing, or actually the number of people in after the flop. If there's six people in and it's a free-for-all, you can't bluff at it because someone's going to call you. You want it to stay somewhere down below three players. So the number of players, yeah, as it exceeds two players, it's going to hurt your chances of bluffing. Um, but what's really important is your position. So the number, the difference between your number and your position, we don't want this to turn out to be zero because it would mess us up, so we're going to put a one on there. Um, generally what this says is, what number turn to act are you? Your position, that's P. So if you're first to act, P would be one, second to act would be two, and of course is the number including yourself of the people remaining after the flop. And of course, the strength of the hands you're up against. Scale of 1 to 10, and you can see as this exceeds 5, square, it's going to uh, start to make your chances of bluffing worse. You can't bluff if someone's already doing it, or if someone's representing that they got pocket rockets, pair of aces up against you. It's not the time to bluff, so you want the strength to be low. Now if you put the numbers into this equation, this actually kicks out a percentage on a scale of 1 to 100 when you should bluff. And I hope that uh, you guys can use this in your friendly games down the street. You can also use this online. I'll post a calculator for this so that you don't have to do the math yourself. I'll stick it on scientificblogging.com. You can find my name, Garth Sundem. Go to the site and I'll have an Excel spreadsheet that you can just plug numbers into for this and it'll tell you when to bluff in poker.